This is the 10 lessons I've learned from 10 plus years of digital marketing. I've learned a lot over the years and one of the big things is that branding is more than logos. And what I mean by that is branding is so much more. It's what the office looks like when you walk in. It's the type of language the receptionist is using. It's the letterhead, it's the email signature, it's everything across the board. A really strong brand um, is consistent. And it obviously takes a significant amount of effort and investment to make that happen. But the really strongest brands uh, are doing that consistently. And that kind of goes into the second thing, which is customer experience. And what I mean by that is customer experience is an essential part of the process. So I can do everything I can to get you clients through your website, through sales funnels, through Google ads, through Facebook ads, whatever the tool is, but it doesn't really matter if the customer is having a bad experience when they get you. I've had clients that have done it both ways. I've had clients that have done a great job with customer experience and we can give them even just a few clients a month and that leads to repeat business. They close 50, 75% of the business that we send them. We have other clients that I don't work with anymore because you know we might send them 100 leads in a month and two of them go through and those two people leave horrible reviews because the entire process was horrible. Obviously that's not marketing, but that is an essential part and that's why it's important for me as a business owner, as an agency owner to really assess whether or not clients are a good fit for us. And that's why we don't accept everybody and work with everybody anymore. We definitely used to do that and that was a big mistake. Now, this kind of feeds into process. Process sometimes is an issue and that's something we help with because we have processes built up in our business that help us have a more consistent flow of prospects and help us manage those prospects and, and sell the pro appropriate services to them and then make sure that those are getting fulfilled in a timely manner and are really getting the results that they need. So you need that same thing in your business, whether you're a small business or you're a financial advisor like we're primarily working with now, you need to have a process. What happens when I send you a lead? What happens when you get someone that reaches out through your website? Do you leave them sitting for a couple days? That's not good. You need to be able to reach out to them immediately and you have to have a system in place that will allow you to do that. And then how do you get them to come sit down with you, take that first consultation, consultative meeting, and what does the process look like from there? It's gotta be all planned out and I know it's different for every single client, but having a structure really makes a huge difference in making the whole entire process more effective and making sure you're getting a better return on your investments. And with that said, when it comes to advertising, especially now with internet advertising, testing is everything. So, you know, we'll have people that say, I wanna do whatever this specific service is and I wanna do it for a month and we'll see if it works. And that's not exactly how things work anymore. Um, you gotta do things for a couple months and see okay, these ads are performing and these ads aren't, so if we double the investment in this ad and take the investment out of this ad, is that making the overall performance better? And being able to track things online makes this a lot easier. You know, I used to work in radio and it was very difficult to track things, but we also did everything that we could to make sure we were really assessing whether or not the advertising was getting the ROI that people expected to have. And one of the ways you can do that is by looking at your sales. If you are not doing any of this specific type of advertising, uh, what would you expect your sales to be in May or in June? And obviously things are gonna be affected by this whole pandemic, but in general, what would you expect your sales to look like over the next few months? And then if you had the advertising on top of it, watching those sales, and obviously there's some understanding of analytics that goes into it, like understanding that you're not going to necessarily see a return right away from an ad because maybe your sales process, it takes a month for a client to go through and actually become a paying client. So you, there might be a, a little delay and that's all really important to figure out before you start your marketing so that you know whether or not it's working or not and you know how long to be watching it before you can get that idea. Number five is specialists. I, for a long time, tried to be everything for everyone. I can run Google Ads, I can design Google Ads, I can design Facebook banners, I can run your Facebook page, I can write blog content, I can make videos, I can make a website. But at the end of the day, 
having specialists working on specific parts of your marketing, and this is true for any part of your business, and this is true for the economy as a whole, as a whole, we're a specialized economy, and that works for everybody, because if I can get really good at the thing that I'm doing, and I can pay someone to be really good at this specific thing, and you can pay someone to be really good at this specific thing, then everyone works more efficiently, we're all more productive, and we all make more money in the end. The way that I do that in my agency is I have a team of people that provide the most common services and then we work with subcontractors that we vet and work with and figure out the best process for, uh, for some of the things that we can't do in-house. And then number six is experts disagree. So I spend a lot of time reading blogs and industry content about marketing and it's crazy how one person will say this thing and one person will say this thing and they'll have studies that back it up too. So I'm sure if as investment advisors especially, you'll understand that there are definitely people that disagree and everyone's you eventually kind of have to make a decision and maybe just try it yourself because there's never going to be perfect data, at least not yet. Um, obviously things are better than they were before, but that's not something that exists. And then we have everything is changing. Everything is constantly changing and especially now. I mean, I kind of lament sometimes over the fact that what was working as a marketing director a year ago is no longer working um, because things are changing. And if you are a business owner, you absolutely know this. And it's exciting because that means there's new opportunities constantly to be doing new things. And it's a little frustrating because something that worked last year there is so much construction going on right now, of course. Sorry, there's a lot of construction going on and I can't tell how that's affecting the audio. But it's exciting because there's opportunity, but it's also frustrating because something that worked last year might not work this year. Um, and that goes into number eight, which is we got, I spelled that weird, spoiled by free social media. I started in marketing in about 2000, I mean, I really started in 2004, I was building websites and stuff. Uh, but I really came up in 2010 to 2000, the whole way through the 2010s, and we totally got spoiled by free Facebook, free Twitter, free YouTube, and that has changed. It wasn't a sustainable model, it never was. We just happened to get them early on in their creation, so we got to take advantage of the free platform that you could just post something and you could reach your audience. That's not the case anymore. If you've used Facebook anytime recently, you understand that especially if you have a business page, you post things and it's something like 1% of your audience sees, if you have a smaller page, it's closer to like 10, 15%. That's like nothing though. And you really have to treat these as paid advertising, as radio was, as newspaper is, as TV is. It's cheaper and you can track the, the results a little bit better, but it's still a paid advertising medium. And a lot of people, because we got spoiled with that, are still kind of hung up and wishing that things were different, uh, wishing that things were still the way that they were, and it's just not the case anymore. And that feeds into number nine, advertising costs money. And this is something, again, because I was raised in this social media spoilage, it took me a while to like really realize what businesses should be spending and my own business should be spending on advertising because I got my start a lot of it with YouTube videos that were pretty much free, blog content that was pretty much free, uh, and Facebook content that was free. So for me it was like, wait, I'm supposed to be spending money on my advertising that's besides just the creative? Um, and that's absolutely the case. I mean most businesses are spending 10 to 20 percent of their gross revenue on marketing. That's a pretty standard number. And I know for a fact financial advisors are a lot of times not spending anything close to that and wondering why they can't get new clients through the door. And that's a big part of it. Uh, parts of it might be process, parts of it might be what type of advertising you're spending your money and time on, but a big part of it is you're just not spending any money on advertising at all. You're not making that investment in your business when your competition is. Your competition is spending this 20% of their gross revenue on marketing and they're just wiping the floor with you, which is true for any industry. And especially early businesses, if you're a new advisor or you're a startup or something, you wanna be investing even more than that 20% to, to be growing your market share. And then finally, relationships. Relationships are the core of everything in the business world and that I think I was a little jaded when I was younger about business, um, but then I realized that it's really about 
making connections and figuring out ways that you can be mutually beneficial to each other. And that's true for business to business. That's true for business to consumer. It's really about providing a solution that helps the market and then getting compensated for that solution and building those personal relationships so that you know you can trust each other and you know that you have each other's best interests at, at heart. And that doesn't necessarily mean you have to work together. I have plenty of friends now, uh, colleagues that are business owners that I respect and we share notes sometimes, but we don't work together because maybe my solutions aren't the best fit for them or their solutions aren't the best fit for me. And that's totally okay. We still maintain those relationships because someday that could change. Um, but really it's just important to really notice that the people that you're working with are people. And that is uh, especially um, something to really keep in mind when you're working on the internet because you spend so much time looking at a screen, it's easy to forget that the person that's on the other side of the screen is a person. Those are my 10 lessons from the last 10 plus years of uh, doing marketing online. Leave a comment down below if you want me to go in depth with any of those a little bit more. Otherwise, you can check out the full post about this on my website, which is xanamedia.com. Have a great day, guys. Bye.